This health centre came out of the death of a woman called Jean Viles who died of cancer in, at 35 in appalling circumstances with two children, 16 and 2, sleeping in the same bed. The processes and systems of the civil service were completely missing her, one of the most vulnerable people in our society. That's what the welfare state and the NHS was all set up to do, but it was missing the point. And it was really getting hold of Jean's life and actually afterwards ourselves getting purposeful and saying we'll build the first health centre in Britain that's owned by the patients and not the doctors. I could see here in the, the middle of the Lower Lee Valley now, 300 yards from the Olympic site, that at that time, 25 years ago, nothing worked. Anyone who could leave these as housing states had left and you had 55 languages and dialects in 10 minutes walk of our buildings and, you know, lots of voluntary sector projects having management committees and all that stuff, but they never built anything. When did you last have your blood pressure down? Um, well, I've been a GP for 20 years in Tower Hamlets and always wanted to be able to provide much more for my patients. Uh, I recognised that, yes, I could prescribe them an antidepressant, but actually often what was really important to their health was getting a job, uh, getting some training, uh, looking at the environment they lived in and the creative uh, side of them as individuals. I think one of the important things when this health centre was designed was to think about the quality of the environment within which we were delivering services. It's well known that in wealthier areas that people expect and get a very high level of both services and also the buildings in which those services are delivered from are also of high quality. So what we wanted to do was to build a very high quality environment which gave the message to our patients and to our users that they, they were equally valued. Again, how do we build rounded buildings so we lessen the sharpness of the buildings in this community? These are handmade bricks like the ones used at Glyndebourne Opera House. You know, how do you build a health centre and make it cost effective and do it like that? Well, there are ways, actually, but it requires commitment and, and imagination as to how you do that. Well, I'm just interested in making things work. And what I've seen here in East London for years is that just a lot of stuff didn't work very well. And how do I begin to form partnerships with the public sector and business and other entrepreneurs to just do stuff. If you could draw another one like that on the I've day. come for the simple reason is um, to keep my mind going. My body might be going rubbish, but I want to keep my brain still working. I've been coming here nearly 18 years now. Some have been coming a bit longer. But we all sort of meet up here. They all come from different parts of town Hamlets. But we all meet up here. And it's socialising with other people. Well, when we started this, uh, a centre all those years ago, we were very much a one-off. Now I'm uh, director of NHS Lift nationally, which means we're taking this model of care for patients across the country. It was the um, church room, it was all just 200 seater church with a pulpit and choir stalls and 12 old people sitting where they always sat and it looked as though the dead had been carried out and no one had noticed, you know. Obviously what we did was bring together a first bit of resource and ripped out the whole of the old church and just left a shell and put a capsule in the middle of it that defined a church for 40 people, an art gallery, an integrated nursery, and built a little business plan around all that so that it became a sustainable room. That's what we try to do. And this canopy lifts up on ropes and you can do theatre here or Bengali Eid or Jewish Passover. It can become many, many things. In some ways, it's about down to the detail of the chair, you know. Um, why did we go for handmade chairs? Because I think children remember which chair you sit on as a child you know it's really really important whereas we keep stuffing our schools with plastic chairs and bent legs these have been here 23 years those little details are what matter i think that what we've been about here in this social enterprise is not just function but about beauty and innovation and art and i think what you see here is a beautiful space because i believe we are the environments we live and work in and if we build certain sorts of work and play environments that are brutal, we will become brutalised. If we build beautiful spaces, it will change the way we are. Really important for all the hundreds of children coming through here. There's a place here full of human stories. Billy, who built our park out the back, was an unemployed 28-year-old. All I did was, was give him a shovel and a pick, and he started picking up the tarmac, and had this vision to plant a meadow, and my response was, go for it, Billy. He plants the meadow, and six months later, the butterflies arrive. Civil servants find all this people stuff really difficult. But we all know, it's why we all watch Neighbours and EastEnders. It's the people bit that makes it work. And you look at all the forms they give us, and it never mentions the people. Big mistake. What's also important is to underpin the model with a really strong financial base. 
And to do that, over the last five or six years, we've developed our social enterprise hub here at Bromley by Bow. This is a way that we deliver services for this local community. For example, we have a landscape design business. We have a graphic design business. We have a whole range of different businesses which create jobs and opportunities for local people, but also create financial profits so that we can sustain the wider work of the centre. Lots of people coming through, politicians for example, uh, we have many ministers coming through the Bromley by Bow Centre and only yesterday actually had the Prime Minister coming and launching an initiative to support third sector organisations. And if you make it work well, if you work on this little playground with a little hub and cl cluster we're going to make outside with the housing company, and that goes well, you might become their little hub in this park, you know, because it's all about relationships. I think the um, Leaside team and Lord Mawson and the work that we've carried out in the last year has been a huge success. Um, it's got all the staff on board and the staff thinking about ways of promoting the business. And if, if they're on, on side as well and they can see you know, it's not just the jobs, they want to do it for the community, they're quite passionate about turning the place around. I think clearly what uh, social entrepreneurs t tend to do is they tend to bring innovation, new things, new ways of working, and demonstrate what it means in practice. And of course, just think about how Jamie Oliver does the school meals thing. He doesn't write a report, he gets into the kitchen with the dinner ladies and begins to make a whole new reality work. That's how entrepreneurs work. And imagine if we started to do that purposefully around the country. What I thought was really exciting about uh, the presentation of what's been learnt in this sustainability project is that in the process of doing the learning together, these healthy living centres have uh, made real positive differences to the lives of the people in their communities and 12 months on have a very much stronger sense of what they're about and what they're going to uh, achieve. It's a time to get real and to remove some of the clutter we have created over the years. Very expensive clutter of government and other stuff and get back to the fundamentals. And I've sort of spent 25 years here without a cent really, just making something out of nothing. So entrepreneurs like me thrive in this environment. The question is, can the public sector and civil service learn from some of this stuff? Because all the projects we've put together here began with nothing.